What's up, everybody? I'm Hoops and Hip Hop, and we are back with another episode of our Odd Facts series. Now, if you're not aware exactly of what this series is, basically, we're going through a different set of characters in the Pokemon world each time and giving some odd and quirky facts about them. If you'd like to check out the rest of the videos in this series, click the iCard at the top of the screen to go to my facts and trivia playlist. However, with that being said, today's episode is going to be all about shiny Pokemon. Shiny Pokemon have been one of the most amazing and successful features to have ever been introduced in any Pokemon game, because not only is the idea itself really cool and interesting, but the idea of being able to hunt out these Shiny Pokemon has given the Pokemon games themselves an amazing staying power and allows people to replay them for hours upon hours upon hours trying to hunt a Shiny version of their favorite Pokemon. And as I'm sure many of you know the drill by now, today we are going to be looking at some weird, some odd, some quirky, or maybe even just some under the radar facts that you might have not thought of right off the bat when thinking about shiny Pokemon. We've got a lot of interesting stuff to cover here today, so let's just go ahead and get right into it. Okay, so this first fact is actually an exploit which allows you to bypass a form of shiny locking, believe it or not. Every once in a while, the Pokemon Company will distribute Pokemon in the form of eggs, meaning you get an egg and you have to hatch it yourself. However, even though these Pokemon are often special, sometimes they are shiny locked, meaning they will not be shiny no matter how many times you try to hatch them. However, with that being said, if you trade this egg to another person, and a person other than the person who obtained it themselves hatches the egg, it will then be able to be shiny, therefore bypassing the shiny lock completely. As a matter of fact, this is the only way to get a legitimate shiny Manaphy from the Pokemon Ranger egg since that egg too is shiny locked. Way back in Generation 2, when shiny Pokemon were first introduced, whether or not a Pokemon was shiny was actually determined by its IVs, and this allowed some weird things to happen. One of those things is that since gender was also determined by IVs in Generation 2 as well, it was impossible to obtain a shiny Pokemon with a male to female gender ratio of 7 to 1 that was female in those games. This is because the highest attack IV that a female Pokemon with a 7 to 1 gender ratio can possibly have is 1, while the lowest attack IV that a shiny Pokemon can have itself is actually 2. Another thing that is determined by IVs in Generation 2 is the letter of an unknown that you are going to encounter at any given time. Due to this fact, it's actually only possible to obtain unknown I and unknown V in its shiny form. And finally, since the type of the move Hidden Power is also determined by IVs in Generation 2, a shiny Pokemon that uses the move Hidden Power is only capable of having that move be either Grass type or Dragon type. Moving on, a fact that's rather obvious but isn't really talked about that much is the fact that Pokemon Gold and Silver were the first Pokemon games introduced that were actually playable in color, and this is likely a major reason why shiny Pokemon were introduced in the first place to utilize the fact that the games were playable in color, and this also explains why the Pokemon are called Color Pokemon in Pokemon Stadium 2. Going back to the odd side of things, there are actually several generations of Pokemon that seem to favor one particular color of shiny Pokemon in particular. So for example, there are actually 43 Pokemon in Generation 1 that have some sort of green in their shinies, in Generation 2 there are 35 Pokemon that have pink in their shinies, in Generation 3 there are 29 Pokemon that have red in their shinies, and in Generation 4 there are 26 Pokemon that have yellow in their shinies. Even though this next one doesn't technically have to do with shiny Pokemon specifically, it's still very cool because in Pokemon Stadium and Stadium 2, Pokemon that have nicknames will actually show up with a slightly different coloration. This is due to the fact that the Pokemon's color in Stadium and Stadium 2 is determined by the Pokemon's nickname specifically, as well as the original trainer's trainer ID number, as well as their name. Another interesting thing to do with the spin-off games is that in Pokemon Coliseum, shiny Pokemon can actually look completely different than what they look like in the main series games. So, for example, a shiny Diglett in the main series games will pretty much just have its nose colored differently, while in Pokemon Coliseum, a shiny Diglett is actually completely green in color, which is completely different from its main series counterpart. However, while it is fascinating that the shinies in Pokemon Coliseum can be so completely different from those in the main series, it's actually much harder to obtain a shiny in Pokemon Coliseum, because while there are still the same odds, a 1 in 8192 chance to actually catch a shiny, due to a glitch in the game, it's actually possible for a shiny Pokemon to revert back to its normal form once you catch it, because you not only have a 1 in 8192 chance for a shiny Pokemon to appear, but once 
you actually catch that shiny, you actually also only have a 1 in 8192 chance for it to retain that shininess, making it basically twice as hard to actually get a shiny Pokemon on your team. Taking a look at non-main series games one more time, in the Super Smash Bros series, it's actually possible when you choose a fighter to change its coloration to a number of different color palettes. However, when it comes to the Pokemon, only three playable Pokemon actually have their shinies capable of being chosen. So for example, you are able to choose Pikachu's shiny when choosing a color, you're able to choose Mewtwo's shiny form when choosing a color, and you are able to choose Jigglypuff's shiny when choosing a color. However, for the rest of the playable Pokemon in the series, Series, at least up until Smash Bros Ultimate, you are unable to choose their shiny coloration as one of their alternate color palettes, even though this is a central feature of the Pokemon games. And finally, to round off the video, it's actually possible for all of the following unobtainable Pokemon to be shiny. Number one, we have the Poochiana or Zigzagoon that attacks Professor Birch in Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. We have the Zigzagoon that Wally uses in the capture tutorial in the same games. We have the Ralts that Wally catches in the same games. However, it will only be shiny in this initial catch, not in subsequent battles. We also have the Pokemon that the Old Man encounters in Fire Red and Leaf Green. You have the Mancino that accompanies Professor Juniper in the intro to Pokemon Black and White. You have the Sinchino that accompanies Professor Juniper in the intro to Pokemon Black 2 and White 2, you have the Purloin that Bianca catches in Black 2 and White 2, you have the Fletchling that the rival Calum or Serena will catch in the capture tutorial in X and Y, and you have the Bunnelby that Calum or Serena will also capture in the capture tutorial in X and Y. Now, the thing that is funny about this is that apparently because Game Freak likes to troll us, all of these Pokemon that we are not able to obtain are capable of being shiny, however, several Pokemon that are able to be obtained such as legendary and mythical Pokemon are shiny locked and there is no way to legitimately get a shiny of those guys even though you're able to catch them and theoretically shiny hunt them as well. So uh, GG Game Freak, thanks a lot. And there we have it, everybody. Now, personally, even though I am not a hardcore shiny hunter, I absolutely love that shiny Pokemon exist and that shiny hunting exists as well because it's just such a fun feature in the Pokemon games and it's fun to watch people hunt for hours and hours and hours and then finally get that payoff and find that shiny that they've so desperately been looking for. If you guys enjoyed the video, though, be sure to give it a like and let me know down in the comments below which of these facts you enjoyed the most or if there's another fact that you know of that I didn't mention that you would like to share. Also, be sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel for more Pokemon content every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, as well as more Odd Facts videos, and if there's another Odd Facts video you'd like to see, be sure to leave that in the comments as well. Finally, be sure to check me out on Spotify and follow me for a chance to win a copy of Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. The game is almost out, it's only a little over a month away, so be sure to go do that so you can be entered to win a copy of each of the games. Finally, with all that being said, I'll be back on Saturday with another video, so be sure to hit that notification bell so you can know when it goes live, and with all of that being said, I love you guys, and I will smell you guys later.